words of power because we are kings and our words matter. failure and defeat and all of those things. I reject you in the name of Jesus. You have no place in my heart. I will not entertain you. I will not keep you in my heart. From this day forward, you cannot be in my heart. I have no place for you. Get out of my heart in Jesus' name. Be uprooted from my heart. Be planted in the depth of the sea. Be gone forever from my sight. When you speak it, by your confession, by speaking it, you remove it. Extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. I will extol thee. I will extol thee. Sam Chaladurai invites you to a special pastor seminar at AFT Chennai on the 20th, 21st and 22nd of January 2016 from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please note that all messages will be in Tamil only. Prior registration with a fee of Rs. 700 is required. You can register online at www.refsam.org or you can call us at the numbers on the screen. We look forward to seeing you there. For many people, God is not able to bless them because of their mind. That's the problem. And this has become the toil, resource for toil in people's lives. Because their mind is not thinking right and uh, thinking biblically, thinking spiritually. Everything becomes a toil for them. Everything is difficult for them. Because their thinking is not right. They don't believe that the blessing is upon the work of their hands. They don't believe that God meets all their needs and supplies all their needs. No, they don't believe it. See, they don't, they don't believe God as the provider. Because they don't think like that. Because their mind is not oriented towards that. Life becomes a big toil. When they have needs, they only complain. They only murmur. They reach out to this person, that person, everywhere trying to get their needs met, but they never think about God as their provider and never learn to depend upon God to provide their needs. All right? Turn to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15. Chapter 15, verse 12. Then came his disciples and said to him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Jesus was preaching, and they said, Did you know that your preaching has offended the Jews? I mean, the, the Pharisees? And he answered and said, look at the answer Jesus gives. Every plant which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Now please listen to me. <laughs> These Pharisees were upset at Jesus' preaching because there are a lot of plants that the father has not planted. <laughs> there are a lot of stuff in their heart, a lot of junk planted in their hearts, planted literally planted and have grown in their hearts that the Father God has not planted. God didn't put that. It's not God's thoughts. It's not from God. It's not biblical. 
it is not truth god did not give those thoughts their tradition their their men's teachings men's doctrines men's uh, traditions they have followed and they have been deep rooted in that and those things have been planted in their hearts that's why they are upset at jesus is teaching there's nothing wrong in jesus is teaching he was speaking the truth and they are upset at jesus is teaching now if you're going to be up- upset at jesus is teaching then what can we do he speaks absolute truth they are upset at jesus is teaching because their heart is full of junk filled with men's tradition and men's doctrine that they have followed and they have planted inside men have planted it inside it has grown inside ha huh? every plant that god has not planted has to be uprooted he says it all has to come out jesus says that's his answer to that observation say let them be upset because every plant that god has not planted has to come out that if it comes out it will be all right how does it come out let me tell you how to pluck it out many people have in their hearts many people have in their hearts trees that god has not planted plants that god has not planted in their hearts ha eh? many people how do you uproot it jesus said if you have faith like a mustard seed you say to this mulberry tree sycamore tree which is basically a mulberry tree which gave fruits that you can't put in your mouth in you know, a no good no man can eat that fruit so he says say to this useless tree be thou plucked up and be rooted up and be planted into the sea when you say it it will be uprooted and it will be planted into the sea hello i'm talking about how to uproot the stuff that has been planted there god has not planted it but somebody has planted it men's traditions have planted it inside of you wrong teachings have planted it inside of you somebody said that and it's gone inside and it's become a become planted inside of you now when you hear teachings from the word of god it's upsetting you know some people say well you know after 25 years i've heard it otherwise you know so they you know i agree with what you're saying but when I, when i go home all that stuff comes and overwhelms me you see what that is plants inside it just won't allow them to move forward at all it just won't allow them to go forward at all how do you uproot it jesus says say to the tree that tree that's planted there that unwanted tree say to the tree in other words when you open your mouth and you speak it and say you thoughts of poverty you thoughts of lack and insufficiency you thoughts of failure and defeat and all of those things i reject you in the name of jesus you have no place in my heart i will not entertain you i will not keep you in my heart from this day forward you cannot be in my heart i have no place for you get out of my heart in jesus name be uprooted from my heart be planted in the depth of the sea be gone forever from my sight when you speak it by your confession by speaking it you remove it every tree that's been planted like that must be removed now so a lot of people have to change their thinking trees have to be uprooted so that they can receive the word of god and be renewed in their minds now let me give you four things that program your subconscious mind four ways your subconscious mind is programmed one is by authority figures your subconscious mind is programmed by authority figures what does that mean it means that the people whom you respect will say something to you you have great respect for them you believe them and they will say something to you maybe negative maybe putting you down or something like that they'll say something to you when they say something to you it matters much to you because you believe them and you respect them the more you believe them and respect them the more that matters to you that becomes a thought in the depth of your heart it gets embedded it goes deep so a lot of people have had authority figures who have spoken into their lives failure defeat poverty and all of these things and it has gone into their hearts it has been planted long time ago sometimes like that through authority figures and it has been planted in their hearts 
through authority figures. The second way is repetitions. When you say something again and again and again, you know, then that thing becomes, that thing gets embedded inside. You see the television advertisements are based on that. They understand that very clearly. You watch television for half an hour and you'll have to see that advertisement. They say it's only four dollars, I mean four rupees and, and uh, you know, what does he say? I'm going to drink tea in London or something like that, you know. That crazy looking thing, you know. And you see it about ten times, you know. Again and again and again. You see it. And uh, whatever product, uh, you know, anyone is promoting, they put it on again and again and again and again. By repetition, they get to you. So when you're in the store, when you're thinking about something, you're immediately reaching for that because you've seen it on television. And you're, if, you're, if you're not reaching for it, your kid will tell you, this is what I want because I saw it on television. That's exactly what I want, you know. Just by repetition, they get you because it goes deep in the heart. Thirdly, experiences. Talking about how your subconscious is programmed, experiences. For example, some people uh, say get divorced or something like that. Something bad happens in their marriage and so on. They go through a turmoil. That's a bad experience. That's a very, it's a trauma experience, you may say. So some people begin to form opinions. Like one woman said, I don't trust men at all. I said, do you know all men? Not all men. You know, you've not only not even seen five or six men. You've seen your father, your husband, your brothers, and that's about it, uh, your circle. You don't know anybody. How can you say, I don't trust men? Just a blanket statement. I don't like men. I don't trust men. See what a negative attitude. Just like that, you put it in your heart and it goes deep inside because of the hurt, because of the experience. It goes very deep and it gets embedded in the heart. What it does is it makes a new life impossible. See, just because you're divorced and broken in life, it doesn't mean it's over. God is in the business of rebuilding the broken down life walls of your life. God will help you rebuild it. It's not over. It's not finished. You know. Maybe whatever thing has happened, you know, God will help you rebuild it. But without your thinking and your cooperating with your thinking, it can never happen. When you are thinking negatively and you say, I don't trust in any man or something like that, then you leave yourself without any future. There's no future for you because your thinking has decided your future already. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a woman thinketh in her heart, so is he. That's the way she's going to be. She's never going to trust man. She's going to never going to make peace with men and never going to have any kind of life with men. That's it, you know. Experiences programs your subconscious. The other thing is environment. We are all, in many ways, product of our environment. We grow up in a certain environment and the environment many times shapes us and forms us. We are what we are many times because of the environment in which we grew up. Sometimes that becomes a problem, you know, because of the negative environment in which we grew up and it takes a while to change things like that. So you understand that. So authority figures, repetition, experiences and environment, at least four things, maybe there are more that program the subconscious mind. Now you got to take the word of God and work against it. How do you work against it? More than the authority figure that has spoken the negative things in your life, the Bible is authoritative, God's word. God is bigger than anybody. Let him speak into your life. More than repeating uh, the same failure story again and again in your mind uh, and uh, thinking about what somebody else has told you again and again, Repeat for yourself the word of God and its promises for a new life for yourself. More than repeating in your mind the life and the bitter experiences that you've had, repeat for yourself the wonderful experiences that God has for you. The wonderful miracles that you read in the Bible of how God transformed many people's lives. Look at that and get a new picture. Get in the new environment. Let the Bible become your environment. The word of God become your environment. It will shape you and form you in a new way. See, when Abraham 
he was without a child god took him and said count the stars he said no i can't count he said that's how your seed will be what was he doing see abraham was counting only the years and was counting only his gray hair and was counting his wife's gray hair maybe and how many shrinks have happened you know all over the body and all of that but god said don't be counting all that man you know because if you count that you know you, it becomes impossible start counting what i tell you look at the stars and start counting the stars and it's innumerable you can't count it no matter how much you try your seed is going to be like that in the night you count the stars in the daytime look at the sands of the sea look how great they are how many they are your seed is going to be like that he gave him a new picture a new image to look at the church is like that the church is a place where we provide you with a new picture maybe you've got all bad pictures when you come to church you get a new picture a picture of victory a picture of success a picture of prosperity a happiness and peace and all of those the new picture must come we preach to give you a new picture and the new picture will determine what you're going to be now let me just read to you just one little portion genesis chapter 30 you know the story of jacob and laban jacob went to his uncle's house laban's house and fell for his daughter he had a pretty daughter fell for her worked 7 years hoping that the uncle will get him married to her and the uncle had a wedding a dim light wedding <laughs> now you got to be watchful shouldn't have a dim light wedding you know and i can't understand this guy he's got to be utter fool this guy is <laughs> because uh, you know only after the thing was over he realized that this was a different woman you know i just can't digest that at all you know just can't appreciate a man like that <laughs> after the whole thing was over he realized that he's married the wrong one the one he always didn't like the one that didn't look good and didn't want he didn't want and so on he married her so he went to the father in law very upset he said what's this you know you've done to me this dim light wedding and all of that you know this is no not fair the father in law said don't worry you work for another 7 years i'll give you the other daughter that you like also very convenient you know <laughs> so the guy worked for another 7 years so 14 years work for a woman some people will do anything <laughs> you know, 14 years he worked just to marry that girl that he liked you know and then worked for another 6 years for his father in law so it was 20 years in 20 years time the father in law change the salary 10 times he'll fix a salary and lower it say now recession is on please understand we'll change it later on you know something like that the guy must have come up with the guy was a big cheat and a big fraud you know <laughs> i mean just took him for a ride and jacob deserved it also in one way because he just cheated his brother of his birthright and ran away and all cheats will find out in their life that they are better there are better cheats there one day or the other so he has met his match somebody that can beat him out <laughs> in this so 20 years later the guy was about to be sent home without anything no money nothing he worked so hard if one sheep was lost he had to pay for it you know that kind of deal you know working for a father in law like that i hope you none of you have a father in law like that you know <laughs> and look at what he says he says for it was little when thou or which thou hast Uh, thou hast before i came and it is now increased unto mul- unto a multitude he says because i came it it has increased he's got an increase anointing because he's abraham's child so no matter how bad he is he's got that anointing <laughs> he says because i came you mul- you increased you know your flock increased in multitude and the lord has blessed thee since my coming and now when shall i provide for my own house also so he has not provided yet start he has not started providing yet for his own household so he said i need to go and mind my business man i got to do something for myself and he said what shall i give thee the father in law and jacob said thou shall not give me anything he knew this for this guy you can't get anything from him thou shall not give me anything if thou will do this thing for me i'll again feed and keep thy flock i'll pass through all the flock today removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle and all the brown cattle among the sheep and the spotted and speckled among the goats and of such shall be my hire 
So, now listen very carefully because I don't have the time to explain. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come. When it shall come for my hire before thy face, everyone that is not speckled or spotted amongst the goats and brown amongst the sheep that shall be counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. And he removed, that's a good deal he says. And he removed that day the he goats that were ring straked and spotted and all the she goats that were speckled and spotted and every one that had some white in it and all the brown amongst the sheep and gave them into the hands of his sons. And he set three days journey betwixt himself and Jacob because he didn't want any accidental breeding. <laughs> and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. And Jacob took him rods of green poplar and of the hazel and chestnut tree and piled the white uh, stra uh, strakes on them and made the white appear which was in the rods. And he set the rods which had piled before the flocks and gutter and in the gutters in the watering troughs when the flocks came to drink that they should conceive when they came to drink. And the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle ring straked, speckled and spotted. And Jacob did separate the lambs and set the face, faces of the flocks toward the ring straked and all the brown in the flock of Laban. And he put his own flock by themselves and he put them not unto Laban's cattle. And it came to pass whenever the stronger cattle did conceive that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in. So the feebler were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. And the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and maid servants and men servants and camels and asses. Next verse, 31, one. And he heard the words of Laban's son saying, Jacob had taken away all that was our father's and of that which was our father's, he has gotten all his glory. That is literally all his wealth he got from our father's stuff. And now look at verse nine. Thus God has taken away, he says in response. Jacob says, thus God has taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived and that I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream, behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straked and speckled and grizzled. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream saying, Jacob, and I said, here I am. And he said, lift up now thine eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straked, speckled and grizzled. For I have seen all that the Laban, that Laban doeth unto thee. See, he's explaining how this happened. He says, he says, when, they, when the cattle conceived, I had a dream, he says. And during the dream, the angel of the Lord came to me and said, lift up your eyes and look. And I looked and I saw that all the ones that are conceiving are the kind that I said I'll take. I was seeing that. And it happened exactly. That's how I increased, he says. The simple side of the story is this. That's how I increased, he says. So God, through a dream, changed this man's mind. He was afraid. He thought he was going to go home empty. He was going to be cheated completely out of his wealth and everything. And God wanted to change his mind, put a different thought in his mind. See, in those days, God gave many dreams. Why? Because that's the way God could speak to them those days, many times. For Joseph, God gave a dream. When he was just a 16-year-old boy, God gave him a dream. He had a dream that all his brothers and everybody will come and bow before him. That changed the man. It changed his thinking. It changed him on the inside, did something to him. So in order to do that, to change the person on the inside, God gives dreams. Now today, you don't have to go look for dreams. You don't have to go home today and say, God, give me a dream like you gave Jacob also. Yeah? You should not be going after dreams today because we have something that Jacob never had. We have the word of God, the Bible. Now you can take the Bible and create a spiritual experience, just like a dream. You can take the Bible and the promises of God's word and you can meditate upon the promises that relate to your need and keep looking at them, see that you have what you need, see that you have what you desire, and keep looking at them, and when you keep looking at them, that thing becomes the reality of your life. 
by the word of god and by the meditation of god's word you can create a dream now hello you and i if you want we can create a dream we can take the words of god whatever your lack is whatever area you are in need of whatever your problem is you take the word of god that relates to it and put it before you and keep looking at the possibilities of a better life possibilities of success in that area keep looking at what god's word says and what god's word promises for you and when you keep looking at it, that dream becomes a reality because that dream changes your thinking when you meditate upon the word of god it changes the innermost heart as a man thinketh so is he amen so whatever your need may be the word of god is there the promises of god there are there you can take them and put them before you and look at them and create your own dream keep looking at your own dream create a spiritual experience through meditation and when you meditate on the word of god when you keep looking at that when you keep looking at what god has said happening i tell you what god has said will become a reality in your life amen thanks be to god who always god says us to win yeah thanks be to god who always god says us try your finish name thanks be to god thanks be to god we have overcome hallelujah Try your feelings. 